Hello everybody, welcome back to Ajdani Brothers podcast. Today we have another special guest, Mr. Gino Hasito. He's an attorney, he's the legal technology entrepreneur, and he's the chief operating officer of Unava. And his goal is to digitalize the entire document lifecycle. That's a very interesting Welcome, topic to talk about. Mr. Welcome, Mr. Gino. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me, guys. I do hope it's an interesting enough topic for your podcast. We'll try to make this as engaging as possible. Well, of course, yeah. If uh, you want to share something about yourself to the audience, please go ahead. Ah, yeah. First of all, uh, to the both of you, thank you again for, for having me. It's, it's really you. great to be here. As I said off camera, it's a really beautiful space. I wish your viewers could see this. So thanks for thank having you. me. So as introduced, my name is Gino Jacinto. I'm a lawyer and the chief operating officer of Unawa Inc. We are a uh, legal technology startup uh, out of Singapore, but running here operationally in the Philippines, founded by PJS Law, one of the country's top law firms for the last few years mm -hmm. now. And as you mentioned, um, our goal uh, depending on however which way you want to look at it, is to digitize the entire document lifecycle. Okay. And what that essentially means is we want to um, eliminate the need for uh, physical paper in any commercial engagement, any document engagement, so that you can uh, shift into the, the more digital world. However, um, being backed by lawyers and our legal background, is we want to make sure that this is not just a tool of convenience, or um, something cute or trendy, we're ensuring that it has a legal binding effect, at least here in the Philippines, for, for our initial run. Interesting. So what made you come up with this idea? Where did the inspiration yeah. come from to digitize everything? So Unawa, um, as I mentioned, was founded by a group of lawyers, and we've had our experiences in our court system, and we've seen um, the amount of paper that goes into the into, into, that yeah. goes into litigation and all of the other pleadings that need to be filed, as well as every other business, how much paper gets used and the impracticality of it all. We can, we can view it from the standpoint of cost. Mm -hmm. uh, the cost of paper is actually something I don't think people account for. For a small business, you could spend up to 100,000 pesos on all paper-related costs. So. I told you guys this might not be the most engaging topic, but we'll try. Yeah, so, <laughs> it's good um, actually. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of people don't realize how much paper is um, because they think it's just the reams, but it's the printing, it's the printers, it's the toner, uh, the storage. So in a, in a space like this, um, not, not, not to put you guys on spotlight, but I'm sure the rent is you yeah. know, nothing to be shy about. But if you were to like allocate that entire office just to store your paper, you're, you're spending a lot on essentially True, very true. Yeah. A place you to store documents. Take into consideration all yeah. aspects. All, when you take yeah. into consideration all the aspects. And not to mention the envir environmental impact of paper. Here in the Philippines, um, paper is the second most prevalent um, uh, physical waste. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, as corny as it might sound, I do believe in what I'm saying is we are at a stage where we should take care of our environment. And it's not that easy to do, but there are little steps that can be taken, such as going paperless. However, that's easier said than done, especially in the, in our economy and the business perspective, because paper is still very much generally used um, with for things that need, you know, legal binding effect. And in our court system, paper is still very big. Paper is where you manifest your consent, where people sign deals. It all happens on paper. We're trying to digitize this, and again, in a way that's not just um, convenient, mm -hmm. but in a way that actually. Um, creates that legal binding effect, it will allow for more trust in the process, more trust in the transaction. It will eliminate all possibilities of fraud mm -hmm. and all the other dangers yes. of, a, of a paper document. Well, now we know that the getting digitalized should be, the process should be really hard, right? Like right now, what you're going through. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest challenge right uh, now? There are several challenges. Um, one, it's, it's a relatively... Well, it shouldn't be, but it's a relatively new concept. Um, the idea of going digital and abandoning paper might be far-fetched for some people. But if we were to break it down, we are at that cusp. We are at that age of, of analog to digital. Um, I would compare it to the landline to the cell phone or perhaps mm -hmm. uh, registered mail versus email. There was a point in time where there was apprehension to go from one to the other. Uh, and for our for our industry, I think that's that's where we are now. We're at that cusp. So 
there are a few hurdles. Um, one is acceptance and adoption. Yeah, that's some, hard, right? Some people, people not, yeah. are very set in their ways. Especially and when it comes to the government, a lot of people in those positions are older. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. No, we'll get into that a little bit later. You'll yeah. be surprised, actually. <laughs> um, but another thing, um, the another appreh uh, not apprehension, excuse me, another hurdle we have is to really complete the digital life cycle. We have to make sure that every transaction can be done paperlessly. Mm -hmm. However, for the most part, we are getting there. There are just a few things that that's just not the case. And as I was mentioning again off camera, yeah. for things that require notarization, our notarial rules, and again, thank you for inviting me to discuss something like this. For our notarial rules, it still requires uh, the physical document to be printed out and your wet signature embedded on it. Mm -hmm. like, okay, how secure is it? Like, if I want to put all my documents online and then do it with e-signature, everything. Yeah, in terms of cybersecurity. Yeah. So yeah, that's a very important aspect for us. We make sure we are not only maintaining the minimum industry standards of security, we encrypt every stage of the document. Perhaps um, it might be a little bit more cumbersome for us, but we wanted to make sure that there were no ifs, buts, or any doubts in our process. So mm -hmm. in terms of encryption and security, unlike other platforms, and I'd say this with all due respect, obviously, unlike other platforms, we, we focus on several stages of the document. Everything from your identity, you can't just um, sign up you need to go through an EKYC process. You need to uh, provide more information about yourself. What is EKYC, oh, sorry. EKYC know is um, electronic <laughs> know your customer. I'm yeah. sure, for example, for, for Gcash, mm. when you created your Gcash okay, account, it, yeah. you had to do that upload selfie ID. upload, mm -hmm. all of that. So we go through that sort of process for, for the identity verification. Um, for, the, for the signature portion of our processes, there are other methods of encryption. So your signature is tied to your registered account, your identity. Yeah. There are many ways to sign our documents, one of which is the traditional, um, you can use your finger or a stylus. And then that one uh, is the first and the most recommended one. So you can really get that whole experience that we're all used to. You can upload a signature, which is very common on all, all of the other platforms. However, we found that to be the most uh, risky version of uploading an electronic mm -hmm. signature because nowadays, um, our electronic signatures, our digital signatures, because of all of these platforms, are quite widespread. So my signature is, a lot of people have my signature. Mm -hmm. And because it's digital, they can easily copy, paste, lift it off their document, create an account, and try to use my signature. So before you can upload a signature, we want to make sure that the person who is uploading it is really the person who they're saying they are. So we will go through processes like um, a one-time pin, or depending on the device or depending on how much of our system we, uh, our users use, we yeah. will be implementing uh, biometric technology and things like that to really mm -hmm. ensure the identity. Okay, that's great. Now I have a question. <laughs> um, Before you ask your question, Joey, can we turn off the fan, please? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So... I'm all for innovation and new technology and all these things. But let's say I'm somebody who's used to doing things the old way. Mm -hmm. Okay, just to give you an example, we have somebody we work with that always tells us, I'm old school, you know, I like yeah. paperwork, don't send, me, don't send it to me through email or PDF and stuff like this. Some people are like that. Absolutely. But I'm sure you've come across them when you're pitching this idea or trying to grow the business. What do you tell them to sell this service? Like, what are, what are the selling points? What are the advantages of going paperless? And how do you convince somebody with an old mindset to go this route? Uh, if, if I had the answer to that, we would be <laughs> evaluated in the billions. No, but in all seriousness, that is a very common problem, especially here in the Philippines. And as you mentioned, the older generation are very set in their ways. But it's... It's not that difficult. Um, we we try to well, what we try to do when we when we speak to our clients is first we want to know their process. We will never impose our process on them. We will ask them their day to day process. We will ask for any any blockers they might have in any transaction. What are the hurdles they experience with what they go through, and little by little we will answer how we can solve that problem, how we can solve that problem, and then eventually we will be explaining how these this system is in every way more efficient, more practical, 
And in, depending on what perspective you're really interested in, if you're into cost savings, um, um, going paperless is much cheaper than using a, a paper model business. If you're very conscious about the environment, um, the environmental impact of paper is something I think that most people perhaps are unaware of. They don't yeah, realize yeah. that in the Philippines, as I mentioned earlier, paper is the second most prevalent uh, solid waste we have next to next to plastics. Yeah. And it's it's, you know, the fact that it's still being used despite all the other alternatives is, in my opinion, a bit ridiculous, but fair, I think. I think for the reasons you guys were asking, um, people are still a bit apprehensive because they think it's not as safe. Your first question was about the security. Mm. I could have easily said on a piece of paper, if, if I forged your document, would that be any safer? Would that be any easier? I could argue that forging a, a wet signature is much easier than forging a digital signature because of all the other signature, uh, excuse me, all of, other, the, all of the other security yes, components yeah. we add. We make sure this is all but impossible. I don't want to say impossible. Um, nothing is impossible, but for the most part, we take security into account and that's the level, that's the thing we pitch. So uh, to go back to your question, and I apologize if I'm talking too much, uh, to good. go back yeah, to your I'm question, um, I tried to go real world example. I tried to ask him about his concerns and or hit him or her about their concerns about going digital. And then I try to compare that to paper. So they'll say, what if, what if my electronic signature is forged? And what if your wet signature is forged? What are your alternatives? Um, what do you have to protect against that forgery? For us, we have um, security measures in place. If you believe or if any of us uses our platform and the document lands on your lap from Unawa and you have doubts as to the veracity and the authenticity of that document, especially if it's printed out or forwarded, we, impl we put a QR code that allows you to scan the document and the original document will be pulled up on the system. Mm -hmm. that, will, that will either be on the cloud on your internal servers or on the blockchain, depending on the use case of the enterprise likes or the method they choose to do so, that will be pulled up against um, the physical document you're holding. If you see any error or any mismatch, 100%, this one is not the original document that was put online. Okay, cool. That's, Worse, that's if you scan cool. it and nothing comes out, that means they were just trying to um, replicate our system, replicate the security of our system, but they missed out on that one step. Okay, how soon can we use this? <laughs> As I said, uh, it's live. Yeah. Um, I will be giving you guys a um, complimentary access to Thank our you. platform. Uh, we'll be in contact for that. But mm. yeah, it's, 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 it's live now. Okay, so people can use it? or Yeah, so unawa.asia is our website. Um, that's where all our products fall. We have uh, a suite of products. We have uh, SignSecure. That is our electronic signature platform. We have SafeForm, that is our digital template library that, that speeds up the process of your document generation. We have another platform called Forma. This is our document management system where you are allowed to um, not only move forward with your digital documents, it also allows you to digitize your physical documents in a semi-automated cool. way. And finally, nice. we have our uh, current project, uh, current product called R Notary. That's remote notarization. Um, we subscribe to the Supreme Court's rules on remote online notarization. Mm -hmm. And this is what I was saying off earlier, that that's still very much paper. However, um, Unawa is working with the Supreme Court. We are in the process, and I know our government, rightfully so, and finally, very proud of this. Um, we are moving into the electronic notarization space very soon. And as I'm sure any businessman or any entrepreneur knows, yeah. Yeah. the convenience is it's yeah. next level, yeah. So are those yeah. all, 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 all of these on, in one website? Or yes, they're platforms? all on uh, onawa.asia. Yeah, yes. You can, you, as, I, as I was saying earlier, um, we don't want to push our offerings on anyone. We do realize there's a big transition into digitization. Mm -hmm. There are apprehensions. So if we are to just bombard our users with everything and insist you have to use everything at once, adoption might not be where we yeah. might not be what we want it to be. So just baby steps will allow you to start with a digital form that you can print out to sign if you're more inclined to that, or just use our electronic signature platform to sign your documents and so on and so forth. Okay. Is there, okay. I'm sure we discussed some of it, but is there, let's say I'm a businessman and I have a huge company. Is there any risk for me using your platform? A risk in what way? Um, not necessarily. I mean, uh, it would be weird for me to answer that. In, yeah. Is it uh, free yes. to use? Is it yes. Free to use? Yes. Okay. okay. So um, 
very good question, and thank you for asking that. Um, because we are very adamant about the adoption of this digitization here in the Philippines, we wanted to make sure that it's accessible. Mm -hmm. So if I were to go out to pitch to um, like a Sari Sari store owner or a, uh, a freelance, let's say, web designer or a developer, I could talk about our Web3 technology, our blockchain technology, all of the security I had mentioned. But if I'm charging what our foreign counterparts charge at like 5,000 pesos a month, they're going to be like, yeah, no, that's that's not in our budget mm -hmm. right yeah, now. We're, likely, we're a small yeah. business. So uh, we do offer our platform for free. Um, it's unlimited. You can sign as many documents as you want on Sign Secure. Uh, we actually just changed that model. Prior to that, we, we followed what the other companies were doing where it was you get five signatures a month. Mm -hmm. But again, our goal is adoption. Yeah. And if we limit it the way the rest do, limit it to five or ten signatures a month, we know that's not enough. So... It's, it's it's going to be for free. Um, obviously, there are paid subscriptions. You do get more features with mm -hmm. uh, the tiers that you pay for. However, for the bare bones, basic needs of any individual, our free plan is more than enough. Okay, cool. Interesting. So what, what's your strategy when it comes to this? So you've been you've started this with your friends or no, no. your colleagues? No, um, no. Um, this was start, uh, Unawa was founded by uh, the PGS Law. Mm -hmm. one of the country's bigger law firms. So um, with that backing, um, Unawa was able to open doors that another startup may not have necessarily had a chance to open, which is allowing us to uh, really move forward faster okay. in a way that perhaps others wouldn't get the chance to. So it, w it wasn't just a group of friends. It was like um, some okay. really big named lawyers who got involved and said, we need to do something about these current problems, about the digitization process. And as an example, um, uh, if you reach the Supreme Court, for example, um, as a lawyer in litigation, the amount of paper that you would have to submit to the Supreme Court will entail every document you've, <laughs> and again, pardon the getting a bit technical here, it will, you will have to resubmit every document you've submitted at every, from the, every court. Mm, so if you started okay. at um, the Municipal Trial Court or the Regional Trial Court, and then you go went up to the Court of Appeals, that has many processes. And then you go to the Supreme Court, you're going to have to compile all of those documents. Again and again. And again and again, and submit it to the Supreme Court. Uh, one copy per justice. Um, these cases can reach about uh, 6,000, 5,000 pages. You multiply that by 10, 15, depending on how many times they copy it. We don't know if they themselves are replicating it internally. So just for the submission of documents, your Imagine. paper... And your carbon footprint and environmental impact is actually it's a lot, yeah. not good. <laughs> 6,000 pages of papers. <laughs> My God. Okay. Multiple <laughs> yeah. copies of the same paper. Okay, let's go transition to something else. Let's talk about, I, I really want to know about tax. Okay. Is that something you're comfortable with? Tax? Uh, yeah. Uh, what about taxes? Because we yeah. should, you're a lawyer, so yeah. you might have ideas about tax laws in the Philippines, maybe tackle different topics? Yeah. Um, well, I, I, was, I never really practiced taxation. I'll answer what I can, but uh, okay. that's not really my forte, okay. guys. Okay, so I'm not going to ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> I can try to answer it. Uh, what, what do you have in mind? <laughs> I'm not going to ask How not to pay. <laughs> <laughs> it was something along There is line. the difference between yeah. tax avoidance and yeah. tax evasion. There are methods. Yeah, can, not, can you explain that to us? Because I get confused also on that. Yeah. Okay, this is um, catching me off guard a bit. But again, um, not paying taxes is tax evasion, which is illegal. Um, there are methods, and I really, really suggest you speak to a tax lawyer about this mm -hmm. instead of um, relying on what I say. There are legal tax avoidance measures that you can uh, take in to lower your tax bracket, lower your tax rate, and figure things out like that. But again, I, I'd rather you speak to a tax attorney <laughs> about this. Yeah. So but, how do big companies avoid taxes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are the questions that people want to know. These are the questions right? that people want to know. <laughs> yes. Big companies avoid taxes, hopefully legally, yeah. creatively, and properly. Okay, mm. that's a so, brilliant yeah. answer. <laughs> so, such a lawyer answer. <laughs> legally, creatively, and properly. Hopefully. 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 <laughs> What is the percentage that it's done that way? Let's say from a scale of 1 to 100%. <laughs> What's your estimate that they're hopefully doing it legally, 
creatively and properly. Because let's be honest, every country is corrupt and Philippines is corrupt too, mm -hmm. right? I would answer that by saying not as high as I would like, mm. but probably not as low as we all think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting nothing. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, now let's forget about tax. You we talked earlier about how difficult it is to schedule a court hearing or something like that. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to make that uh, better in a sense uh, in the future? Perhaps with yeah. what Unawa is trying to do with uh, the digit, the. You know, I, I really need to get used to saying this word considering yeah. the industry yeah. I'm in. Um, the digitization process will definitely help speed up our court processes mm -hmm. as well. Um, right now, it's all very paper-based, which means uh, you you mail your pleadings, you mail your submissions. Right now, there is a component that you, you can also email your copies, mm -hmm. but essentially, they still wait for the physical copy. So every time I submit a pleading, every time I submit a motion, a motion is when you request the court of something. Mm -hmm. Anytime I have to submit something to the court, I will do it via registered mail. That, yeah. that's the, those are the rules. So that in itself will take a few days for the court to get it. And you have to wait for them to mail you back. Pretty much. Sense, uh, yeah. So everything is still very paper-based. So that alone is very dilatory. In fact, um, uh, this is not news. Uh, that measure is actually taken advantage of so to, to delay the case further. Um, if you're allowed seven days to file something, you're not going to file it in the first day. You're really going to wait for that yeah. seven days and you're mm -hmm. going to take into account that we know the courier, the postal service will be a little longer in, in sending the document and where it needs to go. So that alone delays your case by weeks, months, as opposed to it. Uh, let's say they do mm -hmm. digitize the process. You eliminate the whole having to mail a document, the possibility of a document getting lost, oh, that the, possibility, lot, yeah, right? the, the possibility of yeah. a document getting damaged. Um, that can all be um, improved by digitization. And I'm very happy to say that our current administration and the Supreme Court uh, are taking the right steps. Um, they're okay. very big into digitization at the moment. So as I, as I was mentioning earlier, we are at that cusp. So we are just starting to get into it quite heavily. So while we are at our infancy, our, the Philippines is at its infancy in towards with regard to digitization, I'm very happy to say that the government is taking the right steps. And for, from our part at Unawa, and I know you're, mm -hmm. you're questioning um, the corruption of government, I'm happy to say the people we are working with, at the very least, okay. are taking measures to curb all the corruption. Part of the digitization process is to be more transparent, to be yeah. more open, to make sure that the public really knows things are fair. Yeah, because it's a struggle, especially for people who have a very important case on their hand and they have to wait for six months, yeah. one year, two years, mm -hmm. let's say when it comes to divorce, yeah. right? It takes a very, very long time. So and especially and here, we don't, we don't have that here. Yeah, you can't do that. Why yeah, is it? Annulment, right? Yeah, annulment. yeah you can get an annulment. Yeah. Yeah. But it's quite difficult. It's very it difficult, is. right? Yeah. And you have to spend a lot. There's a lot of paperwork going back and yeah. forth. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it takes a lot of time. Is this done unintentionally or intentionally? Who does this serve, the slow process? Because, of course, it doesn't serve, serve the people. Right. And the lawyers are very annoyed by it, as I can <laughs> tell, because of the paperwork. So who is it serving? Like if if it's not helping anyone, why don't they take the steps, necessary steps to change it? Because it seems like it's working for some people. Well, I don't think it was designed to serve or not serve anyone. So uh, we have to understand that the, the, the court process has been in place mm -hmm. way before we had computers. Uh, my grandfather was a lawyer, and he would type his documents that he would submit with a typewriter, mm -hmm. right? So back then, you can imagine how much slower that was. No internet access, researching on a book. So we are going through our stages. So from him using a typewriter to me using a computer, you can see that transition has already happened. We are now at that next step. I think um, to answer your question, really, it's because it's not serving anyone the the government is now pushing for pushing this for digitization mm -hmm. and to ensure digitization we have to make uh, people comfortable with the entire document life cycle as i keep saying and that's what now is trying to do that's what we're trying to do and it's not just for lawyers mind you this when we say we want a paperless economy our platform is industry agnostic 
-hmm. it can work for anyone, right? So if you use paper, you can use us, you can use our platform. It will streamline everything for you. It will make things much more simple. It will save you money. And if we may look into the future a little bit, uh, we, we are talking about the government. The current administration has already listed their plans for the next few years. So um, as far as I can tell, one of their um, main action points is by 2025, they're going to be implementing a, um, a carbon credit, a carbon taxing system. Uh, I haven't seen the law. I haven't seen the bill. What does that mean? Um, exactly. So um, I can only compare it to our surrounding jurisdictions. So a carbon tax is when an industry will be assigned a carbon footprint score. So if you th break that threshold, you're going to be taxed. So if you waste too much paper, if you burn too much fossil fuels, you're going to be taxed. Mm. In other jurisdictions, if is you go below that... Is there another country who has implemented this? Uh, the EU does it. The, the US does, does it. it. Yeah. Um, in fact, um, in the other countries, those who go below that threshold, they are even able to get a tax credit, mm. which they use internally. And some even sell it. I have an example that I'll probably like probably relay off camera, but there are a lot of the the big um, auto in the auto industry, the, a lot of the motor companies I know are big purchasers of other companies tax credits to to offset their their pollution. So okay. for us, we want to make sure that by 2025, when or if this does get implemented, uh, we're ready. Um, going paperless is not easy. I'm sure it's we've, so difficult. we've, we've yeah. done some studies. The data is not available in the Philippines, but we, we, were, we were able to get some data out of the U.S. And interestingly enough, it was for a law firm. So a law firm, about 15, 15 20 lawyer big law firm, it took them about a year and a half to go fully paperless. Okay. And they were focused on going paperless, and it took them that long. So if, if we, you guys, any other business or your viewers – wait to go paperless it's going to take some time yes so definitely yeah. it's better to adopt early so what country which country is leading in this space right now generally for the most part like with most tech, tech, technology things it's it's always the u.s the u.s the u.s uh tends to lead this they were one of the first ones to pass um the remote online notarization laws uh, both at the state and federal level from my understanding obviously mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not a u.s attorney so but based on my research the u.s is pretty big into it uh, uh, some EU states as well. Um, our region, not so much. And they started it way back, like how no, long? No, I would just, not last five years, I suppose. Last five um, years. I mean, okay. the, these digital tools have been around for a yeah. while, but again, they were more tools of convenience than right. actual practicality. So now there is a really big push and a really strong transformation for this digital because it makes sense. Yeah, it, it does. It, it does. really does. It, make it's sense. really much easier. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, a few weeks ago, I had to sign some banking documents. I I, I had to sign my signature close to three hundred times. Uh, sign here, sign here, every page, and just it's the same thing replicated over and over. And how many times will they really use that document? Mm. How many times will they really use that pile? And how many piles? will that take up for all of these people? It's just, it doesn't make sense. We're mm -hmm. at the point where it no longer makes sense. There's a better option. Exactly. So. Why, uh, let's go. I yeah. want to know this one. Sorry, I'm just going back and forth with everything. No, no, no. Um, why is it that there is no divorce law in the Philippines? <laughs> <laughs> um, again. Why do you think so? I don't know. Yeah, your personal, your personal uh, opinion. thoughts. Yeah. You know. uh, well, the answer to that for the Philippines is not that difficult. It's because we are a, uh, the Philippines has a very strong Catholic upbringing. Mm, okay. And our laws were drafted with that in mind. So they believe that the sanctity of marriage is as sacred as they say it is in the Bible. So the lawmakers at the time, probably very religious, implemented mm. it that way. And why is it so hard to get annulled? Because again, the, 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 rules, the rules want to protect the sanctity of marriage. Mm -hmm. They're of that mindset that once you say yes, that should be forever, mm -hmm. yeah. which we know, unfortunately, for many people is not the case. And are we moving in the right yeah. direction in regards to that? Is Do there, you think like, it's going to change soon? Or no? uh, there have been several um, um, uh, lawmakers that have passed that bill. There, it, it is always met with apprehension. It's always met with apprehension, especially from the, the religious groups. Um, I, obviously, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but to lump everyone together, is, it's quite difficult mm. and almost quite unfair. It could be considered unfair. <laughs> okay, I Philippines, 
it's time. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to level up on everything. The paperless. No, it's and definitely is. time. And again, I'm very happy to say whether it's early, whether it's late, it, it's happening. It's starting. Mm -hmm. And that's why companies like us are, are popping up. That's why we're trying to do what we do. It, it's, it's transitional. It's very transitional. And we, we need to uh, espouse that level of trust. Um, as you guys were saying already, um, many people are very old school. They're set in their ways. They're not comfortable with new things. They don't see the need to change, but I guess in the conversation yeah. we're having, we see the need to change. Mm -hmm. But before you make that change, you want to know what you're changing to is better mm -hmm. in every other way, because otherwise, what's the point? And that's what we're doing. Like during the pandemic, most things became somehow more digital. Absolutely, right? the very yeah. good, very good point. Um, Gcash, for example, true, yeah. Their adoption pre-pandemic was, I think, um, I think pre-pandemic they were. Well, like five, four or five million users. And then they, they're now at 32 million. Now everyone's yeah. using it. Now everyone's using it. <laughs> yeah, you're using it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I haven't held cash in quite some time. <laughs> <laughs> it's convenient. It's, it's all digital. Yeah. Convenient. Yeah, it's, everything's about yeah. convenience, security, ease of use. And for the most part, uh, at Donawa, that's what we're trying to do as, as well. Hmm. Do you have any competitions in this space right now? Like other companies who are trying There to are the other companies. Um, they have similar products, not necessarily the same business model, perhaps not the same goal. Mm -hmm. um, globally, there's DocuSign. I'm sure you guys know about yes, DocuSign. Yeah. They, they are the behemoth. Yeah. They, they have almost 70% market share um, everywhere. Everyone, it's always DocuSign. They got it there out first. Uh, locally, there are some, yes, uh, but our directions are quite different. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. As, as I said, our goal is for mass adoption. I don't want that mass adoption to be monopolistic. Mm -hmm. I mean, in a way, if it were, as from a business point of view, that's good. But from the competition side and innovation side, yeah. if you're it's a monopoly, yeah, it's right? definitely good to have competition. And for the users, it's always good to give the users a choice. Yeah. Okay. Well, is there anything else you want to add? Yeah. Is yeah. there any you questions that we on? didn't ask yeah. you about Unaba, about yourself? No, I mean, again, thank you for having me. Thanks very much. No, but um, f uh, about Unawa, not really. I think the message came across that we are a business. We're a company that's trying to make substantial change. I know a lot of startups now, um, they always try to go around a certain advocacy. They try to push a higher purpose. And for the most part, we believe that's what we're trying to do um, from the perspective of time, cost, um, savings. Uh, the digital transformation is really the next step mm -hmm. of, a, of a growing country, of a growing government, of a growing enterprise, of a growing economy. So we're, we're happy to be in that space. It's, it's a very new space. And, you know, the, yeah, the, if the like for a challenge. new company, like if for us, if for anyone who wants to register right now, Using that, or using Unova would be so much easier. Like for us, it took a while to fix all of yeah. Our so papers we're and we're in the process of dealing with the other government agencies mm -hmm. as well, from incorporation to uh, re-registration. Yeah, that would be amazing. Uh, everything. Yeah. Um, I I honestly believe, let's say in five years, five um, mass adoption of the digital aspect of the um, of the document lifecycle will be so much more prevalent than it is today. Mm -hmm. um, in 10 years, perhaps, it, paper will be an antiquity. Um, paper will be like <laughs> yes, something yeah, that yeah. Uh, people like, oh, I, I, you, like my grandfather used to use paper. My dad used to use paper. But I hope so. Yeah. I mean, it's so much better than to sit on your laptop or hold your phone. <laughs> and you can do, do something and yeah. all your papers yeah. are there. Everything is processed there. No, I know. So I, I know easier. people like like your books. People still like, you know, there's there's a different there's feeling a, to like it. Like emotions. Of course, still, there's yeah. an emotional attachment. But from the perspective of business and a contract, very unlikely yeah, you have an you emotional just want it attachment, done, right? right? Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. So, oh, let's you, get you this want it convenient. So yeah. like right now with the contract, um, if you have an international transaction, you would have to wait for that document to be mailed to you. Mm -hmm. um, if you're closing a fundraising deal, you're closing, you're raising some money, you send your contract out and you're like, oh, it's taking some days. Did they send it? What's happening? There's a, there's a lot of waiting time and a lot of time that gets killed by the, these delays that don't need to happen. 
Um, you can email a message, you can text. Why can't we do the rest of these things now? So that's what we're, we're trying to get at. That's awesome. That's really yeah, Thank uh -huh. you. That's so awesome. guys, paperless, please <laughs> yes. go to their website. Well, no. Yeah, where can they find yeah, you? Um, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. So, so we're at um, unawa.asia. All of our platforms are on it. Science Secure, Safe Form, our no tree form uh, will be on unawa.asia. The free plans, everything's available there. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Help at unawa.asia as well. All right. Thank you for coming. Thank, thank you. Oh, my so God. Thank you guys coming. so much for having yeah, me, guys. Have a great time. Thank you. Thank you.